redemption cry at night. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus. Give me a J. Give me a E. Give me a S. Give me a U. Give me a S. What that bad? What that bad? I said, what that bad? Jesus, give Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. Give Jesus the glory. Thank and praise the name of the Lord. And she is about 75 years old. 76. Hold on to that. She wrote a book, her own biography, From Childhood Tragedy to Generational Triumph. I read this and I was touched. You know why? She had, she lost her parents when she was young. She got into a marriage that was horrible. Every day that man would beat her and chase her out of the house. One night she jumped through the window and broke her leg and still had to run because he was coming after her. She was a Christian, never filed for divorce, prayed for that man, had four children to run with, hard times. I couldn't help but observe the many times her husband tried to take her life, but she held on to Jesus. This is one of the best Caribbean stories I have found four children that are in the ministry, 15 grandchildren that are in the ministry, a legacy. She survived because of her faith in God. There is hope for every mother, every abused wife, every tired person. It's in this book. I recommend it. I would like every family to get a copy of this book. It's out there and it's reasonably priced discounted from the store. Sister Mabel, she said, a motherless, fatherless, homeless, and hopeless childhood to build a family that her four children are preachers, pastors. Kenwin Hunt, whom some of you know, is a son. He pastors right down in Dornian Corner. Uh, Jenny's sister is married to him. And so all her children are serving the Lord. How did she get there? She can tell you. She said it in this book. Through holding on to God, fasting and praying. So I'm going to let her talk to you uh, about the book. And if you like what she's saying, then I'll let you talk about the, the books of the Bible. <laughs> okay, go for it. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amar. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. I thank God that, you know, I was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I know which one. Hallelujah. <laughs> if it's the carnal man or the spiritual man. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the word of God said, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. And the name of this book is From Tragedy to Triumph. And I know every one of you in this building had some type of tragedy in your life. Whether it's a loss of a loved one, whether it's sickness, whether it's financial, whatever it may be. But you know, tragedy goes and tragedy comes. But we're not going to have a pity party. So I want to just run through this as brief as I can. You know, just the table of contents as brief as I, as I can. You know, having a rough start. You losing your, your parent from three years old and then being adopted and losing your adopted parents around nine. And then you actually become motherless, fatherless, homeless, hopeless. Hallelujah. And you know, the, the, that's the first chapter, a rough start. The second one is a dysfunctional family setting. We know many, many people were bo born in this dysfunctional family setting. And many times they use their negative past, their tragedies yeah. as an excuse to be rebellious. To live a negative life, to be on the street, to be on drugs, to be in prison. But uh, this book will let you know that regardless to your past, you can be who God wants you to be. Yeah. Who yeah. God will help you to be. Hallelujah. Because of your past. Hallelujah. You're talking about children that were brought up in a dysfunctional family setting without a father, with a single mother. After I got married and had my four children within the bond of marriage, 
and had to run for my life. And yet I was able to grow up my children in the way of the Lord, train them up in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. That they all serve in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I was a Roman Catholic, and I want to tell you, hallelujah, in those days, you know, I was religious, but not converted. And even in our Christian churches today, we have people who are religious, doing all the religious things, and yet not converted. The pastor here spoke about these things. Let us, you know, and then my wilderness experience. Many of you would know what a wilderness experience is all about. My born again experience when I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. Because I was a Catholic and in the Catholic church I had first communion, confirmation. I used to go to, to communion, have communion. I had the three C's, but I didn't have the BA, the born again experience. Oh my gosh. It will tell you all about getting married for the wrong reason. It's supposed to be holy matrimony, but what we have is matching money. <laughs> matching race, matching color, matching outward appearance, and matrimony is clean out. Hallelujah. You will know all about it. You know the importance of, of marriage counseling in our churches today. I didn't have marriage counseling, but these three young men, Pastor Sam Matura, John Jadu, and Harry Ramkisun. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is why I love outreach, brother. It's because they were preaching in an open service when I accepted Christ. Hallelujah. And we all, they were all young men. They were not married neither, they got married after. So we didn't get much marriage counseling, but it is needed because people running into marriage for the wrong reason. Hallelujah. And then they get married and they get bored and they're ready for a divorce right after the honeymoon. My goodness. Yes, and coping, coping with singleness before and after marriage. Hallelujah. Looking for love in the wrong places. Hallelujah. But prayer and fasting kept me unto this day serving the Lord. From that age, when I, when Kenwin was just about three years old, when I had to walk out of my marriage, hallelujah, and the Lord kept me strong, never divorced, never even remarried, but serving Jesus, fasting and praying and seeking his face. I look for a job. I didn't look for the opposite sex. I look for a job, hallelujah, too often time. We feel we must have the opposite sex to live, but we must have Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. You cannot make it without Jesus and training up your children in the way of the Lord. It is important. Hallelujah. My children will testify. They will tell you they're born in the church, they live in the church, they eat in the church, they sleep in the church. Hallelujah. And that didn't even make them a Christian. They had to make a choice, a decision for themselves. Not because you walk in an, an, a, a garage that makes you an automobile. Hallelujah. They had to make that decision. Some real trying times. This book have about the accident that myself, Derek, and my daughter, we were in coming from Bible school. The car was burned flat. My daughter was badly burned. I also got some burns all on my hand. But you know what? The car was burned flat. Hallelujah. And we was able to come out alive. The devil wanted to make a barbecue with us. But the barbecue was too raw. He couldn't eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will hear some of the, 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 um, the things that I would have done differently. Hallelujah. You will hear about some of it. That I will teach my boy children more about Learn to cook even though you have a wife because she's not a slave. Learn to cook. <laughs> Hallelujah.